Welcome to Live with Passion. I want to talk to you today about making good choices and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you in your life. Maybe you're faced with a difficult decision and you're not quite sure what to do. And I want to read to you a scripture from Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 40, the end of the chapter. And it said that the cloud covered the tent, the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent because of the cloud, and the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all the journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, the people of Israel would go forward. But if the cloud didn't move, they didn't move until the day when the cloud moved. Throughout all their journeys, the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, And the fire was upon it by night in the sight of all the house of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I think that's such a beautiful story because it shows, first of all, that God wants to lead and guide us. And it shows, second of all, that God does lead and guide us. See, the the Hebrews were traveling through the desert. And they were on the way to the promised land. They didn't know the way. And the interesting thing is they they had the Shekinah cloud of God, the, the very glory of God, the presence of God with them in the tent of meeting. That's where Moses used to go and commune with God. And they could see the cloud. And whenever the cloud would move, the whole assembly would go forward. And whenever the cloud would stay, they would stay. So in other words, wouldn't this be wonderful? God made their choices. It was really easy. They just, they just followed the cloud. And wouldn't that be great in life, you know, should I marry this person? What type of a job should I have? Should I become a priest? What school should I go to? Wouldn't it be great if the cloud would show us? But it's the same for everybody. We've got to make our own choices, but the cloud is still there, whether we see it or not. It's just a matter of getting in touch with the cloud, the Shekinah glory of God, and getting in contact. You know, we all have lots of choices to make every day. Talk about choices and decisions. The great gift that we have that God has given to us is the gift of free will and the power to choose. And we are responsible for our choices. The choices that we make are really, really important. And so I want to talk to you about making good choices. And I want to say that who you are today is a result of yesterday's choices. Did you ever think about that? Who you are right now is because of your choices yesterday. And who you're going to be tomorrow is a result of today's choices. So choose life and live. And wisdom dictates that you choose today what you're going to be happy with tomorrow. That's what I like to define wisdom as. You're going to, you choose today what you're going to be happy with tomorrow. You don't choose today what you're going to be happy with right now. In other words, you max out your credit card and then tomorrow you've got to pay for it. No, you choose today what you're going to be happy with tomorrow. And it has to do with a whole life ahead of you. And then, of course, I like this saying, Choice is the chisel that we use to sculpt our life. Choice is the chisel that we use to sculpt our life. So choices, decisions are crucial and important. And God wants to help you because he has a plan for your life. He has a destiny for you and he wants to help you to make good choices. He gave us free will and he wants to lead and guide us by his cloud of glory and by a pillar of fire And when it's dark and we can't see the way. Sometimes we have so many choices, we don't know what to choose. And in life, we have a plethora of choices. Uh, We have the gift of free will. And we want to choose what's according to God's will. And I want to help you because I believe that, as I said, God is there. He has a wonderful plan for your life. He wants you to fulfill your destiny. And he wants you to walk in the best possible way that you can that would fulfill his will for your life. And what you have to do, first of all, is allow him, invite him into your life, and God will help you. So let's talk a little bit about this. People are struggling with all kinds of decisions, you know. uh, What about my children? Who should I choose as a spouse? Where should I go to college? Should I have the operation? What do I do about my parents, you know, that are sick? So if you're in the midst of a decision right now, I want to try to help you the best I can. Let's Let's talk a little bit about Jesus. You know, he had to make decisions in his life. 
And one of the prime decisions that he had to make had to do with his ministry. And then who would help him in his ministry? You know, he chose 12 apostles, but do you know what he did right before he chose the apostles? He went to a mountain and prayed. And the Bible says that he spent all night in prayer to God, came down from the mountain, and he chose his 12 apostles. Well, that's interesting. There was a lot of people following him. He had all kinds of different choices. But notice what he did is he sought God. He went to the tent of meeting. He looked for the cloud. Father, what should I do? And so he made a choice based on prayer. That's one of the things that I do when I pray is every day I always pray this. I surrender and I say, Lord, lead me, guide me, control me. I don't want to just be led by what's on the top of my head. I don't want to be led by my emotions. I don't want to be led just by my feelings. I want to be led by the Spirit of God and what I say and what I do and my life choices. And so prayer is really crucial. And I know that most of you do pray and then you say, well, I still don't feel like I know what to do. (laughs) But at least, you know, it's very important that you pray first. That's exactly what Jesus did. And then I have to tell you, even though he prayed, Notice some of the people that he chose. He chose a tax collector. Peter denied him. He chose Judas who betrayed him. So even, even though he prayed, the son of God, and he made a good, informed, prayerful God decision, there was still suffering in his life. And I want to tell you that even though you make prayerful choices there will still be sufferings that will occur because it's real life. You know, even in the best of choices, there's always difficulties, there's always problems, there's always choices. So don't think, you know, when hardship comes in your life, oh, I made the wrong decision or this isn't the person I should have married, even though I prayed about it and everything. This is hard. I did something wrong. Well, no, this is real life. (laughs) You don't just give up. You know, you stick with your choices, you know, the best that you can, unless there's abuse or something really, really difficult. But you stick with your choices, you persevere. You know, religious life, for example, it's not always easy. There are hardships. There are difficult people. There are times when I feel like I've made the wrong choice. I remember I woke up on retreat one time, and the thought came to me, you know, about suffering and about the choices that I've made. And this is the thought that I got, that, yes, I suffer now in the choices that I've made, but... I would have suffered in any of the choices that I would have made, whether it be marriage, having children, another job in the secular market, that sufferings would have come with that too. So in other words, whatever you choose, there's going to be suffering. There's going to be difficulty. There's going to be problems. But what God spoke to me was that, yeah, I'm going to suffer, but my suffer has meaning and it has purpose because it's God's will. And I've sought God's will the best that I can. I have people come up to me uh, asking about a religious vocation. Father, do I have a religious vocation? I'm not sure. And, you know, and if that's you, you're watching the TV program right now, I, I pray you'll listen to what I'm about to say. I went to novitiate. That's a year of discernment, trying to understand, you know, am I called to be a passionist? Now, I remember my year of novitiate, a year of prayer and study. There, I wish I saw the cloud. I wish I saw the fire, the pillar of fire at night, telling me, yes, I'm calling you to be a passionist. Yes, I'm calling you to be a priest. I didn't see any cloud. I didn't see any fire. I, I remember praying, wanting black and white answers. I didn't seem to get it. I don't think anybody else with me got these, you know, a chalkboard written. Yes, this is my will for you. But here's what I did get. I got a peace within that this was the right path for me. And this is one of the ways that you can tell that the cloud is there. The peace that sur- surpasses all understanding. If you don't have peace about a decision, whether it be buying a house or a car or spending some money or about where your child goes to college or maybe you're deciding about going to college, if you don't have peace, you know, go with your gut if you don't have peace within, then don't do it. The Bible talks about being led by peace. Let peace be the umpire in your heart. You know what umpires do? They call the balls and the strikes. You know, that's that's a strike. That's a ball. That's in. That's out. 
You let peace be the umpire. So I want to tell you that uh, that was one of the biggest decisions of my life, of course, was becoming a priest and joining the Passionists. And I had to be led by peace. But I also have to tell you that I didn't make that decision alone. There were people helping me all along the way, spiritual directors, friends, uh, people that I talk to. And a lot of times people that will come to me and say, Father, you know, I'm not sure if I have a call to the priesthood. I, I will say, well, have you ever talked to a spiritual director? And they'll say no. And I'll think, well, you know, I want to lead you and guide you to talk to somebody that you can get along with, that you seem to jive with very, very easily to communicate your desires. And that's really important no matter what decision that you're going through. You talk to a trusted friend, not to everybody, but to somebody that you can trust. You talk to a priest, you talk to a sister, and you, you communicate. And that's really important because they can help you by listening. And as you talk things out, that can help you to make a decision. Say you're struggling in a marriage and you're thinking, am I gonna get a divorce? Is this the right person? Did I marry the wrong person? Talk to a counselor. Both of you, if, if, the, if you can get the spouse to go, go to a counselor. Talk things out. There's something called Retrovi. That is a, a retreat for people with struggling marriages. You know, you work with it. You work with the community. You don't just say, oh, this is it. I'm out of here. You know, and make that decision. Make good, informed decisions with the community. They can help you. Just live, live with passion.